Hi, uh, I wanted to show something a little bit different in this video. Uh, so I'm going to show you the classic video game Doom running in Excel, uh, implemented in Python using the Python Excel add-in Pixel. I'm Tony Roberts, founder of Pixel, and I help businesses and individuals integrate their Python tools and analytics seamlessly into Excel with the Python Excel add-in Pixel. Doom has been ported to pretty much every platform you can think of. You might even have played it on your fridge. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I was able to get Doom running in Microsoft Excel. Now, uh, I should say this isn't the first time Doom has been run in Excel, uh, but other versions I've seen have been grayscale uh, and run Doom in an external process, pushing the values into Excel. Uh, so this is the first time that I've seen Doom running in color uh, and actually embedded into the Excel process itself. Uh, and I'm going to explain uh, everything to you in this video, so I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be using the Python Excel add-in Pixel, uh, and it's the Pixel add-in that's going to let us run the Python code directly in Excel. So if you're not already familiar with that, uh, then head over to Pixel, pyxll.com, uh, and you can find loads more information on that there. There's a free 30-day trial as well as loads of other information and videos, uh, and you can find that all on the website. Before we can get Doom in Excel using Pixel, uh, we need to get Doom running in Python. This has already been done, so the only thing we need to do is install the uh, side Doom generic Python package. Uh, and this package is available on GitHub and can be downloaded and installed using the instructions on the repos page. Uh, I'll leave a, a link to that below. Uh, you'll need a C compiler to build and install this package, uh, but assuming you already have that, then installing it is just a question of running the setup.py script. The SciDoom generic project doesn't include the Doom data file, uh, so you'll also need to get that. You can get that either from a copy of the Doom game you already have, uh, or from the shareware version. If you search online for Doom WAD files, uh, WAD, uh, there are plenty of guides online on how to get that, so I won't go into that right now. Now we're ready to start writing some Python code, uh, and to start off with, I'll write a function that initializes the Doom package and then runs its main function, passing in some arguments, including the Doom data file. When initializing the Doom package, uh, it needs us to implement a couple of functions. One gets called whenever a frame is ready to be drawn, and the other returns any key presses. The draw frame function gets passed a numpy array of pixels, which is what we'll end up displaying in Excel, and the get key function can just return none since we're not going to be processing any keyboard inputs right now. In the draw frame function, uh, for now I'll just print the numpy array of pixels so we can see what that looks like and test it out. So now, uh, running that function, everything starts up OK and the pixels get printed to the console. The script doesn't end, uh, as the start doom function we've just written just keeps on running, and it blocks anything else from running. In Excel, uh, we don't want to block Excel from running as normal, so we need to make a few changes to run the doom game on a background thread. I'll create a thread as a global variable, and only start a new background thread if it's not already running. Uh, and for good practice, I'll add a lock so that if we were attempt to call this function from multiple threads, only one would be able to update our global thread variable and only start the game once. The daemon flag on the thread allows the process to exit even if this thread is still running, so Excel will close normally when we close it. Uh, now this function will start the background thread and return without blocking. In the draw frame function, rather than printing the pixels array, uh, I'm going to assign it to another global variable, and also use an event object to signal any other threads that a new frame is available. Usually the Doom thread would just keep running in a tight loop, which could limit how much CPU time other threads get to run. Since we don't want that, uh, I'll also add a sleep here uh, so that we don't starve other threads uh, and they get to run too. We could do something more complex here and adjust the time that we sleep for to target a certain FPS or something like that, uh, but this will work fine for what we need. Now we've got that background thread running continuously, we need another function that will do something with those uh, frame arrays of pixels. Our next function will start Doom using the function I just wrote, uh, and then sit in a while loop waiting for new frames to become available. This function is actually going to be a generator, 
and instead of returning a value like a normal function, uh, we yield a value, in this case, the, the frame array. Uh, in our script, we can test this works by iterating over this generator and printing the yielded values. With all that working, we're ready to call this from Excel. Uh, the pixel add-in has the ability to stream data and updates to Excel using what Excel calls real-time data functions or RTD functions. To tell Pixel that we want to expose this generator to Excel as an RTD function, all we need to do is add the Pixel Excel Func decorator and provide a signature string. In the signature string, we've put the argument types and the return type. And here we don't have any arguments, uh, and the return type is RTD. The RTD type itself is parameterized with the value data type, uh, which in our case is a NumPy array. In Excel, our Doom function is available to be called just like any other Excel function, and when we enter that, uh, it returns us an array of updating values. The cell values themselves are NumPy arrays, which isn't quite what we want. That frame NumPy array is a 2D array of pixel values, but those pixel values are themselves a 1D NumPy array of RGB red, green, blue values. Uh, so that's why we're seeing the NumPy arrays as the cell values here. What we need to do is make a small change to the Python code uh, to convert these RGB pixel values into a single value between 0 and 255, and that will give us the grayscale value for each pixel. Uh, each pixel is actually four numbers, blue, green, red, and alpha, uh, each between 0 and 255. So we just want to take the average of the first three numbers for each pixel. Uh, at this stage, I'll also scale the frame since the full-size frame is quite large when displayed in Excel. Now when we call this function from Excel, uh, we get the grayscale values returned as an array. Uh, I should mention at this point that Excel throttles the number of updates it processes, usually it only refreshes once every couple of seconds, uh, but I've changed that setting so that it updates more frequently. If you search for Excel RTD throttle interval, you'll find instructions on how to do that. Now we're going to come on to color very soon, uh, but just to test this out, I'll add conditional formatting to the range using black for zero and white for 255, Uh, and I'll also change the number format so the actual values aren't displayed. Uh, and now we can see Doom running quite nicely, but in black and white. Excel's conditional formatting only lets us do gradients, and so we can't use it to get Doom running in, in color. Uh, but Pixel has its own cell formatting feature, uh, and that's what we're going to use to show the frames in color. Pixel has a few different cell formatters as standard, uh, but for this we need to write a custom formatter based on Pixel's formatter class. We override the apply method, which is what gets called to apply the cell formatting. And this method takes a cell range that needs to be formatted, uh, and the value that was returned to Excel, and a few other arguments that we don't need for this, so I'll just use keyword args and ignore those. Uh, first, we set the number format for the entire range using the formatter's apply style method. Uh, we use the same number formatter as we used earlier in Excel to show blanks instead of the actual cell value. Uh, next, we're going to iterate through each pixel getting the corresponding cell offset from the top left corner of the range uh, and set the interior color, uh, the RGB values, to the pixel value. And that will result in the same grayscale image that we saw before. To use this formatter with our function, uh, we just need to pass the format object to the Excel func decorator, and then when we call this in Excel, our formatter will be applied on each update. So now we know how to use a pixel formatter to set the color for each cell, uh, we can change the pixel values so that we can get the color values. Rather than just getting the average of the RGB values, I'll split them out into arrays of blue, green, and red, the color channels. Uh, and the pixel value will be a 32-bit unsigned integer with the blue value in the third most significant byte, uh, the green in the second, and the red in the least significant. And we can do that by shifting each and ordering them together. The original pixels array is only 8 bits, 
and so are the color channel arrays. So we can't shift those uh, as they are. And an easy fix is just to change the pixels array to be an array of unsigned 32-bit values uh, before we do any shifting. The pixel value we have now is conveniently exactly the same as what Excel expects for color values. So in our formatter class, we just need to change the interior color to be the pixel value. There's one final change that we need to make. Uh, Excel has a limited number of colors it can use. Uh, the colors themselves aren't limited, you just can't have more than a certain number of different colors used in a sheet. The Doom world uses a number of color palettes that should fit within this limit, uh, but because we're scaling the image, uh, over time we'll end up using more colors than Excel can handle. To solve that, I'm going to quantize the colors by dropping the three least significant bits of each color channel, uh, which is done by shifting right and then shifting back left. Uh, this will affect the image quality, uh, but not so much that we'll really notice when it's displayed in the Excel grid. With that all done, back in Excel, now when we call our function, uh, we get the color values returned and our formatter applies the cell formatting to give us the color frames displayed uh, and updating all within Excel. Uh, this is obviously a fairly artificial example as no one's ever really going to want to play Doom in Excel, uh, but it was fun to put together. Uh, I first had the idea when I was looking at the performance of Pixel's cell formatting feature and I wondered how far I could push it, and getting Doom working uh, in Excel seemed like a good way to test that out. But hopefully this demonstrates that for any practical applications of RTD functions and cell formatting, uh, Pixel is, is more than capable. I hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, and if you're interested in learning more about how you can deploy Python tools into Excel, then please do check out the website pixel.com and give it a go for yourself. Uh, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel uh, and please do get in touch if you have any questions.